How much does it really cost to live this lifestyle full time? And is your money managing you or are you managing your money? Hi everyone, this is David with Tigner Adventures and my wife Ninette and our little cat Tansy. We live full time in this RV. And one of the questions that we get quite often is how much does it cost to be full time? And the answer is it depends. Because I have friends that live full time in a van or car and they don't make much more than about 500 a month. I have other friends that are doing very well and they they uh, usually do about six thousand to eight thousand a month um, and you know some of those friends are working so they've got income some are completely retired so it kind of depends on what you want for a lifestyle what you envision as for a lifestyle in our particular case um, I retired at 59 and a half uh, we didn't have a lot in our retirement, but I just couldn't work any longer. Um, my health wasn't as good as it should be and things like that, and the doctor was kind of concerned. And so we went ahead and retired. We only had two hundred, like $220,000 in our 401k, and now we're retiring early. You know, we can't claim Social Security until we're at least 62. And so I kind of calculated out and said, you know, we could do this. Let's sell the house. We can pay off all our debt do whatever. Well, the house didn't pay off all the debt, and so we ended up using almost three-fourths of our uh, retirement, our 401k, to pay our debt and taxes and things, because, you know, on 401k, it's pre-taxed, and so um, when we took it all out, we ended up paying, we had two years, like we were paying $20,000 a year on taxes. It was just ridiculous to get everything all done, and now it's done, but, you know, we didn't have a lot left in our retirement. And so luckily, we were. by the time we did all that, we were up to 62, and I went ahead and, and uh, took out Social Security. And that happened just before the pandemic. So what a major blessing because we quit taking money out of the market at that point, and uh, we just have been living on our Social Security. And so we kind of, you know, we are one of the lucky ones, really, because we have a fairly decent Social Security. We get 1900 and, well, now we get $1,909 a month Social Security, um, and so we're able to live on that 1909 and, you know, do very well. And so um, sometimes I'll pick up odd jobs here and there or whatever. But, uh, you know, most of the time we just live right on that. So the key to that whole setup, though, was me mainly, not Ninette. She's very, very frugal and very good with her money. But I had a difficult time because... I want, I want, and I want. So that's what caused a lot of the problems, you know. And so we, you know, I had to change my philosophy. And my son-in-law took me aside and says, you know, Dad, you've got to change. You, this just isn't working for you. And uh, you've got to, you know, get your life under control here when it comes to finances. And so he introduced me to this program called YNAB, You Need a Budget. And he says, this is how they deal with it. And he says, it's really, really simple because you've got to change your philosophy of what a budget is, for example, your site there. I mean, it's basically, um, he says what they say is that every dollar you get, all you're doing is assigning that dollar a task. And it's like, you know, if someone would have explained what a budget was in that terms to me when I was younger, I would understand those terms. And so that made complete sense to me. So now every dollar that we get, we just assign it to go somewhere. And then it stays in that particular area. And you need a budget. I'm going to show you this software because it makes it so simple. And we have friends that use little envelopes, you know, and they put cash in there. And they really don't do much with the bank and things like that. And it's all just cash. And I just, I just can't relate to that. I mean, it, it's just very difficult to deal with that, especially, you know, when you're traveling around. And so anyway, but uh, this program that I'm going to show you, it really allows us to kind of, you know, eliminate a lot of that hassle make life easy so I'm gonna just dive into it right here and I just want to um, show you this is it I, I made a copy of our budget um, and this is starting of November um, of 2021 and so the balances that I have in in some of these columns are money that's been left over from you know previous months that we didn't actually use and so what it does it just if you don't use the money then you it rolls over to the next month and 
we've now been paid. We got to, it's the first of November. We got 1909, and we're going to put this out into these different categories. So if I um, look at this um, budgeting program, um, I'm going to give you exactly what we put into the different categories. This may fit your lifestyle and it may not you may have to use a lot more you may have a lot less right because it really depends on what you want um, going to this style where you're living in an RV normally we are boondocking if we do stay at a park like we do in Yuma then we uh, work camp but that's actually the only place that we've ever work camped and I don't envision working camping anywhere else because we particularly like to just travel around and and enjoy life so we don't uh, and we can do a lot of that for pretty inexpensively through uh, different other means this software I've got up here on the screen and so I'm just going to kind of show you it um, I have got paid it's the first of November um, I got uh, 1909 and I've got to allocate that out into these different categories so I'm going to show you my categories I'm going to show you um, what um, how much we put in each one and and, uh, and I'll just kind of start off here just kind of showing the software a little bit but on the left side here we have the different accounts that we create and this is a copy of our budget but I've deleted a lot of different things to kind of clean it up and make it so that this is something that you could take and you know you use this kind of format for your own uh, at least getting I call it RV starter because um, I have saved this off and it's on our website tignerdventures.com and you can download the CSV of these categories and just use those same categories in any budgeting program but we like YNAB. Uh, YNAB does cost, it's a prescription thing, it costs about hundred dollars a year um, but it's got a lot of great features but if you have something that doesn't cost or my son does all his budgeting in a spreadsheet so it just kind of depends on which way you want to actually go but uh, anyway so on the left here is different uh, accounts and categories whatever uh, that you have so I've got checking savings cash and we finally broke down and got a visa card now we got rid of all our credit card debt and didn't want any more credit cards but we decided that uh, we need to at least use the visa when we're traveling because debit cards are just we've been hacked two or three times on our debit card and it's just caused a lot of issues so um, so we do have the visa there but that's on the left and then on the on the main screen here is the actual budget and so you'll see here's postage and shipping so if I click on here over here where it's gonna assign money I click there and it shows to the right here it shows that assign ten dollars more for this budget because when I, I set up a target that said I want to put ten dollars a month into my shipping account that's just so I can have things mailed to me and it's zero right now because it actually built up quite a bit and we really don't do much mailing at all and so I moved that money somewhere else and used it but I still you know I still go ahead and put that in so I go ten dollars tab and it changes green because now it's been fully funded okay uh, groceries we usually do a hundred dollars a week for groceries and um, Ninet makes all kinds of cool things and so that works for us you know and maybe you use more food than that but uh, for us we eat pretty good on four hundred dollars a week or uh, sorry hundred dollars a week and so I kind of figure out when the next paycheck is you know because some months have four four weeks and some have five but uh, so we're gonna just put four hundred here um, pet supplies Tansy oh thanks Tansy Tansy's trying to help me out here um, knocking papers down on me so she's wondering what I'm doing huh you wondering what I'm doing <laughs> So anyway, um, Tansy gets forty dollars a month. So, so I've already got twenty three sixty four in this account, and so I just go forty minus twenty three sixty four, and now she's got forty dollars in her account again. So that pays for her food and you know any little toys and things we buy for her or whatever. So uh, you can see we didn't spend all that last month. So now household, um, we typically. I've got here 25, but household covers a lot of different things like, um, oh, I need some tools and things like that to fix something or whatever. A lot of times I put that in household. So, um, but I'm going to go ahead and say 25, but sometimes I, I put more in there depending on what I have planned um, for the month. Um, entertainment, uh, we say 20. Uh, so if I do 20 there, um, so typically we're out traveling around, so we're not doing a lot but if I at some point we you know once we get to Yuma we usually increase that entertainment to like a hundred a month because we start playing bingo and and uh, whatever's you know and so we we kind of increase that so it kind of just depends 
Um, eating out is $50. We don't eat out a lot, but however, when I get to Yuma and we're uh, work camping there, I get involved with the ham radio group down there and they go out to breakfast twice a week, you know, so usually we increase that to 100. So, um, you know, it just kind of depends. Uh, laundry, we're usually pretty good at uh, 20. So I'm just going to take that minus the 675 that's left in there. I'm going to put that back down to 20. And propane, um, 25. And you can see it's adding up there. So it just keeps getting higher and higher. So when I actually go to get propane, I have enough money in the account to actually cover the cost of my propane. And clothing is 10. So I'm going to just go on down through this. So we'll just kind of I'm not going to bore you with entering each one of these in, but I'll just finish all these and then um, when I'm done, then we'll come back and kind of uh, just show you the final result here. So hold on. Okay, so I've got it all done. I've got everything funded here. So if you look back at the screen here, I've got 148.24 left that has not been assigned out of that $1,900. And I've covered everything that we plan on spending money on. And uh, so if you look down through here, it's green on the right hand side. Uh, some of these, like RV fuel, you know, we put another 200 in there, so there's 250 in there now, so the, the amounts just keep going up, right? And then this little category here is um, fixed expenses. Fixed expenses are things that happen every month, no matter what, and we have to actually pay that. You know, that could be like your rent, that could be, um, in our case, our life insurance policies, our car insurance, um, you know, whatever you have. Will be in there that have to be paid each month so we put those in there um, and we actually put the date they're due so all we're doing is funding them and then we make sure they're paid by that particular date uh, these other categories aren't uh, they're just uh, there to uh, and you know as we spend money we put things into those different categories so um, another good category to point out here is pay ourselves uh, it's important to pay yourself some kind of money that you um, with your spouse don't have to worry about um, you know getting okay before you you know, do that in my case because we're married right so so we both are working on this together and so we've agreed that 25 a month is a figure that we have that we can spend that money on anything you want and you can see that uh, in my case I got $26 now um, and in her case she's got 1200 she's very frugal she doesn't like to spend money she likes to save money and so um, when she finds something she really likes then she'll buy it but in my case I buy little odds and ends and so I but I get to do that without having to worry about anything because we have this money sitting there and and so you know it's kind of like your little play money so it's kind of fun uh, that you don't have to worry about it and then this next category down here is our yearly um, budget items and the yearly budget items is the um, things that uh, you know like your that are subscription based that have to be paid once a year and all you're doing is you're setting aside so much money per month and it um, you know allows you to um, have the money on hand by the time that those items are due. So for example, if you look down through here, um, our mail subscription here, we pay um, $100 for um, our mail service in Yuma, and we wanted to have that funded by October, and so it's now fully funded, it's ready, the money's there, uh, so that when we get to Yuma, I can go ahead and, and uh, pay that um, account up full, and and that's good so um, and then uh, you know there's uh, there's it seemed like there was one other one here but anyway um, well like our roadside assistance is due in December and it's now it was $99 oh no we got to go up to 109 so that's not it so okay so then as we go down here um, the other one is like our travel fund in this case I took I, I had uh, if I go down here to emergency savings uh, we have two thousand dollars sitting there for any kind of emergencies we actually had more in that than that so I took the 6576 from there is what this minus is right here and I actually moved it up here to our travel fund and so normally what we do is any extra money we have we normally add it into our travel fund and then our travel fund like for example in March of 2022 um, we've booked a cruise, we've paid for the airfare, we've done all that because we keep putting money into this travel fund and it builds up, right? We've had a whole year of pandemic, we didn't do nothing with them, we just kept throwing our extra money in there um, that we had and it just filled up, okay? So this is, um, you know, so I've got this extra 148, so I'm just going to add that on here. Oops, 148, 24. 
and now the money that we have available to assign is zero and our travel fund is now up to three thousand dollars now one other thing this is just we just live on this all the time and those those fields that I showed you there they don't change they you know the only thing that may change is like eating out sometimes we may decide to eat out and and sometimes I'll take some grocery money and put in the eating out to cover it but the idea is that whatever you do has to fit within this um, category of budgets and so um, and so like if you decide okay well let's go out tonight then it's like well oh shoot the eating out budget zero do we have any money somewhere else that we're not going to spend that we would you know be willing to give up to so we can go out tonight and if the answer is no then we just don't go but normally we have enough money like in groceries and things like that that we don't have to worry about it and so and we don't eat out that much for example but you know whatever with that said we do from time to time you know get little odd jobs that we do and and so i'll make you know some money here and there and if i do make some money then typically the way that we split that up is that for example if i made you know a hundred dollars then we take twenty five dollars and i give it to nine at and i take twenty five and put into my account and then the fifty dollars we put into our travel account so if i make an extra money here and there on whatever jobs you know doing some rv repairs for other people and things like that you know then i will take that money and i'll divvy it up accordingly so um, that we each still you know get some something out of earning that extra money but you know it also goes into travel and and travel is where we're going to have fun and so that's why our travel budget does get you know a lot more money in it over time uh, than you know any of the others you know so and uh you know so that's that's how we do it and uh and so it's not uh, rocket science uh ynab has made this super super sim simple um and so you know that's why we we have used it so let's go over here to um i want to talk about credit cards for just a minute so let's just go over here to the um register because i do have a visa you know and you're i mean the reason we got rid of all our credit cards is because we just you know we just didn't want to be in credit card debt anymore we didn't want to be paying that interest out uh, to the banks and stuff and so but because we you know had some issues with our debit card three times our debit card you know we've had charges against our account where people just started siphoning money off of it and and uh, one time at least the bank caught it uh, the other time someone didn't take the money but they um, they put a charge against us for exactly down to the penny what was in their account and what our overdraft was and it's like what how did they know exactly what that figure was but anyway it tied our money up for um i think the holds on there for like two weeks or something for, so for two weeks we didn't have access to that money and luckily i had transferred you know part of that out into another account so i try we have three bank accounts and we try to keep money between all three of them because if something happens with one at least we've got others to fall back on because when you're traveling around you know you can't sit around for two weeks sometimes and wait for the uh, bank to fi figure things out and so uh, then they said well we suggest that you get a credit card uh, because then if something like that does happen then you can dispute it and you know the funds are given back to you right away or you know that's taken off and you can still use your credit card so it's like okay all right i guess we're going to go ahead and get a credit card so now that's why we have a visa so let's go ahead and, and we're going to just add a transaction here and uh, let's just say we're going to go to fries um whoops fries and we're going to go grocery shopping so you can see that it has categories i mean it has whatever, whatever i've typed in the register before i just grabbed those it automatically knew that that was groceries from when i entered it before so I'm just going to tab over here and say groceries. And then I'm going to say that, um, you know, I'm going to spend $100 in groceries. And so if I go ahead and save that, then um, it puts $100 in my account right here, or, you know, down here in the Visa account. And if I go back up here to budget, um, my groceries account, I've just taken $100 out of the account. And if I go down here to, I wanted to point this out down here at the bottom. So visa now has a hundred dollars that's been budgeted into the visa account and so the way that ynab handles credit cards is when you actually use a credit card you're going to say i want to take it, the money from this account that's been allocated in this account and it actually just moves it into visa so that it's now ready 
to make a payment on Visa when I want to make a payment. And so it makes that really, really simple to kind of keep track of that. And if you overspend the category, then at that point now you're doing, um, doing debt. And so let's just say, let's go up here and just say, you know, if I was to change this category to, or let's say postage. So let's go back over to Visa and I'm going to go ahead and pay for mail. Let's just say, I don't know, the mail center. So we're going to pay for that. It's going to, we actually want this to come out of our, so it's come up here with postage and shipping, but I'm going to come down here and I'm going to find my mail account. And let's see, where's my mail account? Oh, that's the yearly budget. Okay, I'm going to find my mail account and it's right here. I have $100 in that and it's due right now. And, but you know what, I just, uh, I just found out that that's actually $110. So if I save that, um, I've, my credit card over here on the left is now $210 I've got on my credit card. And I've got um, $200 here that is in green and I've got $10 that's in yellow here. It's, I've overspent the category and so I don't have enough money to cover the credit card. And so if I go back over here to the budget, you'll see that um, when I go back down here to this mail account that it's ten dollars in the hole there's an issue here that it's saying but it the ten dollars instead of this being red it's because the reason it's not red is because it was covered by the credit card but if I go down here to the credit card there's only two hundred being allocated for the credit card to make the payment because we didn't have enough money to make the you know to cover the whole thing so so you know you can easily see you know what's kind of going on and kind of pay attention to that so with that said that uh, covers the budget um, and that shows you exactly how much that we're actually putting in there each time and so i think that uh, you know everyone has a different way of doing it i understand that and so it's really up to you how you want to cover it and how you want to do um, things but i think if you can get yourself on a budget you can be debt free you can live this particular lifestyle pretty inexpensively. And, uh, but that's kind of up to you. If you like staying in RV parks every night, then you just have to budget for that. And so as you're trying to figure out whether you can afford to retire or not, you really kind of need to look into all those different um, aspects. And you know, if it's gonna cost you $100 a night for an RV park, then you need to be you know, programming at least 3,000 a month or so in you know, a budget for your rent. Uh, so that's that's how that kind of works, and so it's really up to you how you you know want to uh, do things. Um, one thing is that if you are going to stay in RV parks, if you stay uh, compared to a nightly cost, if you stay a week, it's a lot cheaper than just paying nightly normally. And if you can stay a month, it's a lot cheaper. If you stay a year, it's even cheaper. So um, you know, just look at ways to kind of take advantage of that and and do that. But this is what our budget is. And that's all I can actually speak upon. Um, we are working to, uh, you know, just take care of our own selves and and uh, have fun out there. So I guess that finishes up this whole piece on the budget. Um, I'm hoping that this will be helpful to some. I know there's um, different people that uh, don't know whether they can afford to retire. And I'll tell you what, um, I have I have a, one person I know of, you know, that said they need four million in the bank before they can retire. Um, I have another, uh, and, and they do make good money. Um, I have another person, a uh, friend, or at least a, someone I used to work with, and um, their financial pe person told them they need to put all this money into the bank. And so they were putting so much into their 401k that they had absolutely no money, hardly, to live on per month. So it's like, hey, let's go do this. Oh, I don't have any money. Oh, I don't have any money. And it's like, you know, you got to learn to live your life. And um, so, you know, don't, don't always go by what other people are telling you. You know, the reason those financial guys want all your money is because that's how they make money. And so, um, you know, you got to be careful out there. So, so I guess that's my parting words. <laughs> be careful out there. Uh, figure things out. It's not that hard. I know it's a tough step to take that first step when you're going to retire or you're going to move into this lifestyle and things like that. But, you know, if you um, just kind of look at things a little bit, don't, I mean, you can make it work pretty easily. So um, you'd be surprised. You know, we're very, very innovative as individuals and we figure things out. So anyway, so I think you'll be fine.
Okay. Hopefully that works. Hopefully that helps you out. Uh, that ends this video. Uh, please make comments. Let me know what you think. And if you think I'm <laughs> up in the air, go ahead and tell me. I don't care. Uh, this is the way our lifestyle is. And we really, really enjoy our lifestyle. And we, we're not concerned about money. We don't have a problem, you know. And, uh, you know, we don't have the newest, shiniest things. But we have a lot of fun with the stuff we have. And uh, that's what life's all about and just enjoying life. So uh, anyway, I hope that, uh, you know, you'll watch more of our videos. Give us a thumbs up if you uh, like this or give us a thumbs down, whatever you want to do. But, uh, you know, just uh, make comments. Let us know how you're doing, uh, what's happening, what you, any questions that you might have. Um, but until then, I guess we'll just plan on seeing you um, down the road somewhere. And uh, hopefully it'll be on one of our videos. So take care and enjoy life. Mm -hmm.